Okay, so guys, we're starting with chapter one. Welcome to chapter one here. We're going to start talking about the aspects related to financial accounting. You're in class to learn about accounting. And so for this week, we are going to um, focus on, can I just be wrong that I can't get that up? Come on. Anyway, we'll go through exactly what we're going to cover. We're going to understand that accounting does have numbers in it, but it's more than just numbers. Accounting is a measurement process and a communication process. So accounting measures transactions and takes those transactions and puts them in a form of a financial statement that communicates what happens in a company within a certain period. People are making decisions all the time. Investors try to decide what stocks they want to invest in. Creditors or banks decide who do they want to lend money to. Customers may decide if they want to purchase products from Target or Walmart. Or let's say a customer wants to purchase an online um, furniture. They want to make sure that company is going to be around. Suppliers decide which customers can pay for the supplies. Managers need to um, get information regarding producing products or expanding certain lines. Employees decide where they want to work. Competitors look at market share. Regulators have to decide on social welfare. Tax authorities on policies and local communities on environmental issues. We're all making decisions all the time, whether to invest or lend money, what type of environmental conditions. So the accounting information that gets provided to the external users, not employees within a company, but people outside of a company, that's called financial accounting, which is what we're talking about in this book. The two functions are to measure business activities and to communicate those measurements to external parties in order for them to get to make decisions. Brooke, you don't have to take notes. You can look at this again. If it's something I think is crucial, you're going to hear me tell you, write this down. Okay. Okay, so no, there's a cycle here. Investors and creditors need to make decisions about companies. Companies have activities. And accountants measure those activities and put it in a form of financial statements to communicate that information to investors. That's how the cycle works. Managerial accounting will probably be an accounting course you are going to take after financial accounting if you're required to. That managerial accounting deals with preparing financial statements and data for internal users, people who work within the company. But this class is dealing with financial accounting, providing information for external users. So what's the focus here? We're going to spend this chapter and all, all chapters talking about various activities, business activities, and how we're going to measure them and then how we will communicate that information. So guys, question number one, which definition below best describes financial accounting? 
measuring income taxes owed to the government. The system of maintaining communication with the company's customers and suppliers. Procedures designed to enhance the company's image to potential investors. For measuring business activities and communicating them to external parties. You guys, you can write it in the chat. Awesome. I hope you picked D. You did. Awesome, guys. D is the correct answer. Here's another one. Financial accounting does not deal with which of the following? Measuring a company's economic activity, providing information to internal users, preparing financial reports, or communicating financial results to investors. You remember, financial accounting does not provide information to internal users. That's gonna be managerial accounting. So we're going to look at some business activities and see how we communicate them. Hey, remember me telling you if it was important, I tell you, this is important. Write this down. The most important thing you're going to learn today is called the accounting equation. The accounting equation says that assets, which we call resources of a company, will always equal liabilities plus stockholders' equity. So the resources of a company will always equal the creditor's claims to the resources, which are liabilities, or stockholders' equity, the owner's claims to the resources. So assets are resources. Liabilities are sacrifices. Um, that we have to take care of in the future. And owner's equity are those owner's claims that they've invested in the company. And of course you can say assets minus liabilities equals stockholders equity. We're just changing the equation around. But guys, this is key in what we're gonna talk about today. So write this down, assets equal, Liabilities plus stockholders' equity. Now, there's some other pieces that are helpful. Profits of the company are claimed by the stockholders. Profit is more like net income. Revenues minus expenses equal the net income of a company. Net, net income is benefited by the stockholders of the company. Revenues are sales of products or services to customers. And the expenses are costs of selling those products or services. Now, dividends are not part of the income statement. Dividends are just distributing the profit a company makes to the owners of the company that we call stockholders or shareholders. So how do we measure activities? Well, if there are activities that are related to resources of a company, we're gonna put them in a category. If there are activities that are related to owing money, we're going to put them in a category called liabilities. If there are activities related to the stockholder's investment in a company, we're going to put them into a category we call stockholder's equity. 
And these three activities and categories make up that accounting equation we talked about. Assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. Now, if we deal with activities related to paying dividends or distributions to shareholders, that category we're going to call dividends. If we relate to activities in guard, regarding selling products or services, we're going to lump that into a category we call revenues. Or if we're dealing with activities related to the cost of providing sales or services, that category is going to be put into expenses. And you see that net income or profit is going to be a result of revenues minus expenses. The goal of companies is to make a profit. You see that the measurement role of accounting is to create a record of the activities of a company. To make this possible, companies have to maintain an accurate and detailed record of its assets, its liabilities, stockholders' equity, revenues, expenses, and dividends. Hey guys, another one of these check your understanding. The resources of a company are, are referred to as liabilities, revenues, assets, or expenses. What do you think? Assets are the resources of a company that will benefit future operations. They include items such as cash, inventory, supplies, buildings, and equipment. Those are resources. Items that are beneficial, that are used by companies. Now guys, what about this one? The amount recorded when the company sells products or services to customers are referred to as A, liabilities, B, revenues, C, assets, or D, expenses. Hope you got revenues there. Revenues are recorded at the time the company provides products, or services to customers. So guys, I this is just to see if you're kind of clicking so far. I have a moment for you. I want you to kind of look and see which matches to what. Which item, which word or category on the left matches to the description on the right. I'm going to give you about two minutes and then we're going to go through this together, guys. Okay? I'm going to mute myself.
that assets are resources and resources are benefits of a company. Land is a resource that's owned by a company. Going through this, please stop me. Don't ever feel bad or uncomfortable about asking any question at all. Liabilities are amounts owed to the bank. Common stock issued to investors would be part of stockholders' equity. Payments made to stockholders are called dividends. Revenues could be cleaning services provided to customers. And then last, Workers' salaries for the current period is an expense. Does this make sense to you guys? Are there any questions you have on any of these? Guys, this is important to know, okay? We're going to see this in this chapter. You're going to have a homework question about it, and you'll have quiz questions about this. So really, really important to grasp this concept. Another problem we're going to do. I just accidentally <laughs> problem, but that's okay. So we've got accounts, we've got related transactions, and we're going to figure out what the account classification is. Since I already gave it. Away, let's just go through it. So an account would be cash and it's cash received from customers. How would we classify that? Guys, that would be an asset. Assets are resources. If the account is service revenue, which provides services to customers, then the classification would be revenue. I'm gonna give you a hint. Apart from one account called deferred revenue, anytime you see the word revenue, it's always going to be a classification of revenue. There is an account we'll look at called deferred revenue. That is actually a liability and we'll explain it. But apart from that one, everything that says revenue is going to be classified. This account supplies purchasing supplies is an asset. A building, a, they purchase factory, uh, a factory for operations would be an asset, a resource. Let me go down here to equipment. Equipment, purchase equipment for operations, again, an asset, a resource. One thing you're gonna see with the word expense it's always going to have the word expense after it. Advertising expense to pay for cost of advertising is an expense. Interest expense to pay for the cost of interest is an expense. Every expense will have the word expense. Accounts payable, purchase supplies on credit. That's a liability, a claim to our creditors. Notes payable when we borrow money from a bank. That's a liability. Do you see whenever we have a liability, apart from the deferred revenue I told you about earlier, <clears throat> it will always have the word payable after it. So if you want to know something that's beneficial for you, it's not a bad idea to have it. I hate to call them cheat sheets because there's not a cheat sheet, but to have a, a sheet that really helps you understand this and to have categories like assets and to have a list of assets you're learning about, cash, buildings, equipment, supplies, 
or expenses, to have a list of expenses, or to know liabilities usually include the word payable after them, except for deferred revenue. Dividends are the money we distribute when we distribute cash to shareholders or stockholders. That classification is called a dividend. Good idea to have a sheet that helps you kind of focus on, okay, where does this go? Okay. Until it starts clicking, sometimes it's helpful to have those um, sheets that just keep you focused. Now there's more than three structures of businesses in the country, but a sole proprietor are businesses that are just owned by one person. Partnerships are businesses owned by two or more people. And then corporations are businesses that are legally separate from its owners. Every large business out there is usually a corporation. Now, the largest number of businesses are sole proprietors. However, they don't necessarily make the most money. Corporations are probably the fewest, but that's the larger entities. Now we're switching gears a little. And we're talking about, with each business, the activities that they enter into are going to fall under one of these three categories. So every transaction a company handles is either going to be related to financing activities, investing activities, or operating activities. Now, the bulk of a company's engagement should be under operating activities, the primary operation of the company, the reason the company's in business. But there are necessary financing and investing activities. A financing activity are transactions the company has with investors and creditors. So with stockholders and with lenders. Investing activities are transactions involving only the purchase and sale of resources that provide benefit for several years. In this example, we're talking automobiles, equipment, and buildings, land. We're not talking supplies. That's an operating activity. The key here is the purchase and sale of resources that provide a benefit for several years. They're gonna last over a year. The benefit exceeds a year. So financing activities would be <laughs> investing activities would be purchasing a truck, equipment, or a factory. And operating activities would be purchasing inventory, paying for an insurance policy, any, uh, um, having <laughs> management, all the revenues and expenses related to running the business. So, here we have another little exercise. The following provides a list of transactions and a list of activities. So guys, when we borrow from a bank, are we dealing with financing, investing, or operating? Wouldn't it be financing? When we provide services to customers, what are we doing? Wouldn't that be operating because it's why the company's in business to make a profit? 
So the revenues and expenses would be part of operating activities. When we issue common stock to investors, what do you think we're doing? Operating? No, excuse me, wrong, financing, duh. When we purchase land, investing. When we pay rent for the current period, operating. When we pay dividends to stockholders, guys, that is financing because it's dealing with activities related to um, getting money for the business. So we are paying them back for being stockholders in the business. And then lastly, when we purchase a building, it's investing. Any questions on this before I move on? Okay. So for this, indicate whether the related asset, well, I think we already did that one. We did that one. I just have that in here. Oh, here are, I'm sorry, this is different. This one is what kind of business activity would these be? So initially we had what category were they in? This one is what type of business activity? So pay for advertising. I'm gonna give you a couple minutes so you can attempt this. So then when we go over it, if you have questions, you can ask me. So let's give yourself a couple minutes here. Thank <laughs> you.
Okay, guys, who wants to take this first one, pay for advertising? What type of activity would that be? Operational. Perfect. Excellent. What about pay dividends to stockholders? Financing. Excellent. Collect cash from customers for previous sale. Operational. Yes. Purchase a building to be used for operations. Investing. Excellent. Purchase equipment. Someone else. Uh, uh, would it be investing? Excellent. Sell land. Financing. Would that be financing? No, it would be investing. Here's why. Financing is getting money using creditors or stockholders. Selling land, the, the land was an asset. So to purchase land would be investing. To sell land is investing. Okay? Both ends of the transaction are still investing. Next, receive a loan from the bank by signing a note. Financial. Excellent. Pay suppliers for purchases of supplies. Operational. Perfect. Provide services to customers. Operational. Yep. Well, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. This last one's kind of tricky, so I'm going to tell you it. Invest in securities of another company. Okay. If someone is investing in our company, that's financing. But when a company purchases stock of another company, that is like purchasing a long-term asset. It's investing. So don't let it fool you that they're investing in securities. The key is of another company. It's an investment, okay? So this one is actually invest in securities of another company is investing, guys. Okay? Transactions related to the primary business activities of a company, such as selling goods and services to customers, are referred to as, excuse me, A, financing activities, B, investing activities, or C, operating activities. I hope you get this one, operating activities. The reason a company is in business is to make money, to make a profit. Those activities related to selling goods or services and the cost to sell those goods and services are operating activities. How about this one? Transactions of a company that include the purchase and sale of long-term assets are referred to as investing. Let me see what y'all are saying here. Excellent, excellent. Now, how 
we're going to determine how financial accounting information gets communicated through financial statements. Financial statements are periodic reports published by the company for the purpose of providing information to external users. The four primary financial statements include the income statement, the statement of stockholders' equity, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. So we're going to talk about each one of these statements. The income statement reports the company's revenues and expenses over a period of time. If revenues are greater than expenses, which is what we want to have, we've got net income. If revenues are less than expenses, it's not a pretty picture. You've got a net loss. The goal for a company is to earn a profit. If you continue to have losses, the company is not going to survive over an extended period of time. The statement of stockholders' equity summarizes the changes in stockholders' equity over a period of time. The stockholders' equity section has common stock and retained earnings. Common stock is the external source for deriving equity and retained earnings is the internal source, which means all the net income minus the net expenses or the, the net losses minus dividends over its life. Let's look at this one, guys. On December 31st, Fighting Okra Cooking Service reports the following revenues and expenses. In addition, the balance of common stock at the beginning of the year was 200,000 and the balance of retained earnings was 32,000. During the year, the company issued additional shares of common stock for 25,000 and paid dividends of 10,000. So gives us all this information. First thing to do is prepare an income statement. Now I'm going to tell you, the income statement includes the category revenues minus expenses. So we need to look at the accounts that have revenues. Right now I only see one service revenue. And you see we have it up here, service revenue, 75,000. Now, the expenses, the category expense has accounts that are expenses. Here we see postage expense, legal fees expense, rent expense, salaries expense, and supplies expense. The income statement shows revenues minus expenses equal net income. So you see our revenue is 75,000. We have salaries expense of 24,000, supplies expense of 15,500, rent expense of 10,600, legal fees expense of 2,400, postage, postage expense of 1,500 for a total of 53,000. Our revenues minus our expenses equal our net income, which is 22,000. Do you guys have any questions on this? Any? Okay, let's move on to the statement of stockholders' equity. The statement of stockholders' equity shows what has happened during the period. 
So we need to start with beginning balances. And it told us the balance of common stock at the beginning of the year is 200,000. And the balance of retained earnings is 32,000. Then it tells us during the year, the company issued additional shares of common stock for 25,000 and paid dividends of 10,000. So we're gonna put those figures in the information it provided. The other item we need to add is the net income from the income statement of 22,000. That number is picked up from the income statement. Therefore, our beginning balance plus the transactions that occurred during the year equal our ending balances. The common stock, the retained earnings, and stockholders' equity. Another financial statement is called the balance sheet. This presents the financial position of the company on a particular date. This is where we'll look at the accounting equation. Do you remember that accounting equation at the front, that the beginning, and I said is so important? Assets equal liabilities plus stockholders' equity. This is also referred to as the balance sheet. Important to note, a balance sheet normally on the last day of the accounting time period. Might be at the end of the, the um, year, at the end of the month, at the end of the quarter. It's literally a snapshot in time. So if we look here, Gator Investments provides financial services related to investment selections, retirement planning, and general insurance needs. At the end of the year on December 31st, 2024, the company reports the following amounts. So it shows us all kinds of categories or as, um, accounts. So what we need to do is we're going to start by preparing an income statement first. Then we're going to prepare the statement of stockholders' equity. And then we're going to prepare the balance sheet. So guys, I'm going to just have you attempt to prepare the income statement and then the statement of stockholders' equity. And then together, we'll prepare the balance sheet. I'm going to give you a couple minutes here. Okay, so let's look at the income statement. Remember the income statement includes categories of revenues minus expenses. So we'll take the accounts for revenues and for expenses only. So you'll see <coughs> service revenue of 127,600 and the expenses. Advertising expense, salaries expense, utilities expense, and interest expense. Total 117,600. So the net income would be $10,000. Did anyone get that? Is that making sense? Yeah, it is. Now, the next statement we're going to do is the statement of stockholders' equity. 
It tells us the company had common stock at the beginning of the year of 100,000. And it had retained earnings at the beginning of the year of 30,300. So we show those beginning balances. It said it issued an additional 11,000 of stock during the year. Plug in that part. It said it paid dividends of 5,200 during the year. We'll put in this. Remember when you pay dividends, it's always a subtraction. Then we will need to show our net income from our income statement, which was 10,000. So we will put in our income here. We carry these numbers down. And guys, we're going to use these ending balance figures for part of our balance sheet. Remember, assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. This right here, the ending balances of stockholders equity is what we will transfer for our balance sheet. So you see, we took the common stock ending balance 111. 111,000. We took retained earnings, 35,100, to equal the total stockholders' equity of 146.1. That is where this information came from. As we look up here, we want the category assets. The, the accounts that show for assets would be cash, buildings, and equipment. That's it. So we are going to show those three um, accounts with the amounts and total. Total assets are 182,500. Now, guys, we know our assets will equal our liabilities plus stockholders. So it's our job to look at the liabilities. A liability generally has the word payable in it, except for one called deferred revenue. Do you see the two payables we have here? Accounts payable. And notes payable. They total 36,400. So we actually, guys, have a completed balance sheet. Our assets equal 182.5. Our liabilities of 36.4 plus our stockholders' equity of 146.1 equals 182.5. We have now completed a balance sheet. Any questions before I move on? Uh, can you go back to the previous um, screen for the stockholders equity? Thank you. I just need to screenshot that real quick. Okay. You bet. Okay. Now we've got some of these transactions, and by the way, guys, you're going to notice a lot of these are in your homework. So we'll pretty much have gone through the homework. How is each classified? Is it in the income statement where we post revenues and expenses? Or is it in the balance sheet where we post assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity? And then what type of activity is it? Is it investing? Is it financing or is it operation, operating? So the transaction, Falcon purchases common stock of Wildcat. So they're not, Falcon 
isn't purchasing its own stock, it's purchasing another company's stock. And the account is called an investment. So we know this is gonna be an asset and the activity is investing. Think of purchasing another company's stock as a long-term asset as we would do for a building or a piece of equipment. It's gonna provide us with a benefit from greater than one year. Next one, Falcon borrows from Wildcat by signing a note. The account is called notes payable. Guys, what financial statement has liabilities in it? The balance sheet, right? And it's a liability. And this type of activity we call financing, borrowing money. Next, Wildcat pays dividends to Falcon. Now guys, remember Falcon invested in their stock. And so now Wildcat is giving dividends to Falcon, which is basically for Falcon dividend revenue. And because they're investing in the company, a normal process to do this to receive income. So they invest in other companies and as a result, receive income, which is their normal operations. So the dividend revenue would be operating activities. And when Wildcat pays dividends to Falcon, it's a revenue category, part of the income statement. Falcon, provides services to Wildcat. So we're dealing with Falcon is the company we're talking about. They provide services to Wildcat. So when Falcon provides services, it should be revenues and it would be part of their operating activities, why they're in business. Falcon pays interest to Wildcat upon borrowing money from Wildcat. So this would be an expense and it would be an operating activity. Which of the following accounts would appear in the company's income statement? Accounts payable would be in a balance sheet. Cash is an asset that would be in a balance sheet. Dividends would be in the statement of stockholders equity. The only one here is rent expense would be in the income statement. Which relationship is reflected in the balance sheet? Remember I told you the most important thing you're gonna learn in this chapter, the accounting equation, which is part of the balance sheet. Assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. Now we have one last financial statement to look at, the statement of cash flows. This looks at activities involving cash receipts and cash payments over a period of time. We have cash transactions that involve operating flows, investing cash flows, and financing cash flows. We know operating cash flows involve transactions involving revenues and expenses. Investing cash flows or cash transactions 
involving the purchase and sale of long-term assets. And then lastly, financing cash flows are the transactions involving lenders and stockholders. So we've got this various um, information and we're told the cash at the beginning of the period is 5,000. And it tells us cash received, cash paid. So if we incorporate this into monies in and monies out, we start with a $5,000 balance and then we show cash received from the sale of products to customers, cash received from the bank, cash paid to purchase a factory equipment, cash paid to merchandise suppliers, cash received for the sale of an unused warehouse, cash paid to workers, paid for advertisement, paid or cash received for sale of services to customers, and cash paid for dividends to stockholders. Now, if we break them into activities and we do operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities, we're gonna take these activities or these different transactions and split them into the various activities. So if we start with operating, we go to the inflows from sale of products to customers and from sale of services to customers. That's why the company's in business. They will go under operating inflows. And then the outflows you see are merchandise suppliers, the cash we paid for them for workers and for advertising. Here are our inflows, here are our outflows. The net cash flows from operating activities, 30,000, or 70 minus our 40. Then next we have investing activities, purchasing and sale of long-term assets. Purchase of factory equipment, an outflow of 50,000. The sale of the warehouse, that's an inflow of 13,000 for a net outflow of 37,000. Then as we look at financing activities, borrowing money from a bank, that's an inflow of 45,000. Paying dividends is an outflow of 6,000 with a net flow in, inflow of 39,000. So if we take our 30 from operating, minus 37 from investing, plus 39 from financing, the net increase in cash in this period is 32,000 but we started the year with 5,000 in cash. So our cash that should be shown on our balance sheet also at the end of the year would be 37,000. Any questions on this exercise here, guys? Here's another one. And guys, sometimes it can seem tedious, but I found the only way I really learn is to do problem after problem and let it cement in me. That's why I'm doing this, okay? So Squirrel Tree reports the following amounts. We've got our assets, we've got liabilities, stockholders' equity. And then it says, in addition, the company reported the following cash flows. It wants us to create a balance sheet. So we can take our assets, the cash, the supplies, the prepaid insurance, and the building total. 85,000, 
then we can take the accounts payable, salaries payable, and notes payable, all liabilities, that total 33,200. Then we've got our common stock and our retained earnings, that total 51,800 where the total of liabilities and stockholders' equity equals 85,000, just like our total assets. Do you see, guys, they always have to balance? Always have to balance. Then we have the statement of cash flows. We can go back and look at this information they showed us inflows and they showed us outflows. So our inflows from operating activities, or I should say cash flows from operating activities, the inflows of 60, the outflows for salaries of 22,000 and supplies of four. Give us our net cash flows from operating activities of 34,000 for the year. Flows from investing would be the sale of investments and the purchase of a building for cash outflows from investing activities of a minus 52,000. And then cash flows from financing, borrowing from a bank is 20,000, paying dividends is minus 6,500 for net cash flows of 13,500. If we take the net cash flows from operating, investing and finance, we, we come with a decrease, a minus 4,500. Where did we get the cash at the beginning of the year, guys? Do you see we got it from 2012? We had to plug that in. We had to plug that figure in because we knew the cash at the end of the year here was 7,700, okay? We knew the cash at the end of the year was 7,700. So we had to plug in what the cash was at the beginning of the year. That was a missing, okay? Any questions on this? All transactions that affect revenues or expenses get reported in the income statement. They ultimately affect the balance sheet through the balance in retained earnings. Because remember, the net income amount flows to the statement of stockholders' equity on the retained earnings portion. So, the last piece I want to look at, and I'm going to kind of go through this little piece fast, is the role that accounting plays in the decision-making process. As we said earlier, we provide information that allows people to make some choices. Net income plays a significant role in stock prices. We know accounting serves to make, measure business activities and to communicate those um, activities to investors and creditors. GAAP is known generally accepted accounting principles. GAAP are the guidelines we use in financial accounting to report our activities um, accordingly to everybody else so we keep them consistent. And we use generally accepted accounting principles as our guidelines. So those generally accepted accounting principles are used by all CPAs and accountants 
so we adhere to the same standards. In the United States, the Financial Accounting Standards Board, known as FASB, is used to create GAAP. Globally, we have an International Accounting Standards Board. The rules of financial accounting we call GAAP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. FASB's an independent private body that has the responsibility for establishing GAAP in the United States. Many companies hire trained individuals called auditors that express a professional opinion of the extent to which financial statements are prepared in accordance with GAAP. The goal of auditors is to make sure financial statements can be trusted. This is an example of a report by independent auditors for Dick's Sporting Goods. So basically, be aware of this conceptual framework of the purpose for enhancing qualitative characteristics and having certain assumptions. There in GAP, we assume each individual company is its own economic entity, that we use the dollar as a monetary unit, that we report based on a period. Periodicity means we, we base our income statement on a period, be it a month, a quarter, or a year. And we assume the role that every company is a going concern. It's not going to fold next year. We base financial statements on the fact that it is intending to move, go on. We know it's not indefinite, but for the foreseeable future. So I just wanted you to have uh, a little bit of insight into that. Now guys, before I um, turn off the recording, are there any questions you may have regarding this chapter? Okay. Okay, so that takes us through chapter one.